let's get physical. October the 2nd until the 6th. Happy Mid-Autumn Festival. What do we got this week? Detective Pikachu Returns. The series that started life on the 3DS is back and still looking like a 3DS game. Bit harsh, but true. How can this look so cheap when Pokemon Snap looks so utterly amazing? Anyways, enough negativity, I know you're sick of it. Here we have another spin-off game and many consider Detective Pikachu to be one of the best. A simple premise of a Pikachu and his mate being detectives. How could that possibly be bad? It was so good they made a half-decent movie out of it. Expect more Pokemon hijinks. I can just imagine, you know, a Machamp getting caught up in a steroid drug ring, a Porygon definitely getting done for Bitcoin fraud, and we all know Mr. Mime, that is a pimp's name, so I'm sure it's gonna be good. And our executive producer Cartoon Soren has chosen this as his pick of the week. And if you want to purchase this or any of the other retail games in this week's episode, please check the links in the description. That really does help support us. Video Games Plus is a fantastic company with fantastic prices in favorable Canadian money. So uh, yeah, and they have free worldwide shipping over 80 Canadian dollars, which is not that much to be honest. So yeah, and each week, anyone who buys something with our links can be in with the chance of winning a $10 discount coupon. And this week's winner is Eric B. Congratulations, Eric. You should get an email from VGP in the coming days with your discount coupon. Thank you so much for the support. Borderlands 3 Ultimate Edition is releasing this week. I don't know if this is all on the cartridge or if there's a download required. It's 2K games and they like surprising people. Like all their listings show a cover without the download required. But when it shows up in the post, it's like, surprise! There's got to be a lawsuit in there somewhere from someone with too much time and too much need for a payday. Anyways, I'm surprised this is coming to the Switch. I know they're not visually intensive games, but still, it's the Switch, and it's a AAA third-party game. You can never know. Anyways, these are kind of like looter shooters before that was even a thing. And even though I haven't played this one, I've played the previous games, and they're always a good time. Great gameplay, fun, crazy stories. They're like actual proper games. Remember those? And our executive producers, Totally Grateful and Punky Dooster, have chosen this as their pick of the week. World of Outlaws Dirt Racing 2023 is supposed to be a pretty decent dirt racing game and it's releasing physically on the Switch this week, perhaps only in America? I haven't seen anything about a European release. There are no reviews on the Switch version because, uh, well that's why it's releasing this week. But you know, it's published by iRacing and those guys are overly serious about their racing games. It's almost as though their entire income depends on it. I mean, they're hardly going to be publishing the next big booby brick breaker game, are they? Speaking of which, when's that coming out? Disgaea 7 Vows of the Virtuous is releasing this week and it's a good week because it seems Disgaea is back to its best after, you know, like a seeming misstep of Disgaea 6. They've smoothed out the engine and I heard this doesn't have performance issues, which should never be a thing in Disgaea unless it's lagging from awesomeness, then, you know, maybe fine. I think by seven entries, the world must be vaguely aware of what this series is all about, especially with most of them being on the Switch as well. But they are over the top strategy RPGs with crazy characters, crazy numbers, and unimaginable amount of content if you really have nothing else to do with your life. But that's only if you want to. They're good, and even though the genre may be crowded by this point back in the day, they were an absolute lifeline for strategy RPG fans. And our executive producers are excited. J-Cross 7776, Feig, Precision Plague, Alexander Kato, God of Resin, and Dane Wilkinson have chosen this as their pick of the week. Silent Hope is releasing this week after already releasing in Japan last week under its original name, Frederica. Thank god they changed it. No offense to any lady called Frederica, but your name don't belong on a video game box. Same with Jordan. You think they don't make Michael Jordan games anymore because he's a retired old man? Don't be daft. It's an EU legislation, no Jordan allowed. Anyways, poor jokes aside, this is an action RPG that reminds me of Secret of Mana, something like, you know, we recently saw in uh, Trinity Trigger, and I haven't seen any opinions on this as of yet, so who knows. The gameplay looks decent, even if I'm not sold on the art style. I'm uh, silently hoping this is good. And our executive producers, Instacritic and Parsnip Coffee have chosen this as their pick of the week. Asterix and Obelix Heroes is releasing this week, I think. 
There has been a wealth of these games coming out over the past few years, and this one isn't even by Microids. It's by the equally French company Nacon. Nacon? I don't know. And this is something very different, something we've never seen before. A deck building RPG. Gordon Bennett, even these guys are getting suckered into it. I don't think this is releasing in North America, at least not yet. Anyways, unless it's like a store exclusive somewhere, let me know. The Sisters 2 Road to Fame is probably releasing this week. It's from Microid, so you never know for sure until it pops through your post box. Although you may want to pop it into your puke bag because this is a mini game collection where two sisters go head to head in order to become the most popular social media influencer in town. Just burn it, burn it all. I don't think this is releasing in North America, at least not yet. You don't want it anyway. Lord Winklebottom Investigates is probably releasing this week. Not entirely sure since it's one of those that's had a few placeholder dates, but I'll mention it this week. This is obviously standing out mostly due to its name, Winklebottom, definitely a nickname that was given to him at Eton College. It's a giraffe who's the world's greatest detective. We've never seen animals being inserted into mystery adventure games before. No, never. As long as you forget those couple of dozen other ones. But this one is supposed to be just as good as the others. Not only is it a joke, but it's also a commendable homage to classic detective stories. So it's got decent detective work to back up the joke that will no doubt run its course after an hour or so. And our executive producer Brent McLean has chosen this as his pick of the week. Europe is getting a double helping of top-down racing games this week. Art of Rally and Absolute Drift. Actually, I thought these already released in Europe, but uh, I guess not. They're also in mini collector's editions. I think it's a shame they didn't use the awesome artwork of the double pack they have on their website, Serenity Forge. You know that they go together. It's just really nice, classy. But yeah, Europeans, if you didn't import those already, then you have these ones this week. Harvest Moon, The Winds of Anthos is releasing in Europe this week. It released in North America last week, and I'm not seeing a single opinion on it, which is worrying because it's the most promising looking Harvest Moon game in over a decade. So you would have thought people would be quick to post their sizzling hot takes over on Twitter. Instead, it's all their sizzling hot steaks. I'm really hungry. All right, the low print releases. Persona 3 Portable is open for pre-order right now at limited run games. I genuinely don't know what to say about this, but I think I'm pretty sure this is like a watershed moment. Like this, this is it guys. I think retail is now dead because this is gonna be selling like 50,000 copies like easily. And now even big companies, huge companies such as Atlas are gonna see and hear this and are gonna forget all about retail altogether, especially with their slightly smaller titles like this one, because the profit margins are gonna be way, way nicer for them, which, you know, fair enough, they're not a charity, but it is a sad moment because I like retail. Games are generally cheaper, or they can get cheaper. They tend to mostly go down in price, and you don't only have six weeks to pay up or game over, which, uh, you know, a lot of limited run defenders can't get their heads around. Imagine, you know, having a different way of life. But yeah, I am waving my white flag, limited run, they have won. All hail King Joshua and the fallen Prince Douglas. I'll take my $5 discount coupon via email, thanks. So yeah, Persona 3, limited run. We are in the wrong timeline, ladies and gentlemen. But you know, Persona 3 Portable, great game. There's no doubt about that. But boy, does it bring out the weirdos on each side. Like, are you a Portable fan or are you a Fez fan? The fact that people argue and get defensive over this is kind of hilarious. It's fine to like one more than the other, but you know, not respecting why someone may like the other one, that confuses me greatly. Portable sucks! <clears throat> Something like that. Anyways, I've spent long enough on this. There are tons of editions available, and if you really want to get into trouble, you can send the replica gun through the customs. Oh yeah, and our executive producers Thorn Metal Luna and Issa have chosen this as their pick of the week. I'm genuinely shocked it's not more than that. Oh, and yes, Persona 4 Golden is being done next month as well. Another Crusade is Limited Run's second game this week. Man, if I was those guys, I would be furious. Imagine being announced as basically an afterthought from Persona. Like, oh yeah, this game's coming as well. Like, oh, cheers. It's like a hand-me-down announcement. Ain't no one's buying this, which is a shame because it looks half decent. It's taken a heavy dose of inspiration from Super Mario RPG, 
and it genuinely looks good. But browsing reviews, it seems they didn't exactly find the right balance in gameplay fun. They only copied the superficial things rather than digging deeper to find out what made it really fun. But hey, there's been updates since then with an easier difficulty, so maybe they perfected it. Who knows? But you can order it this week if you want to. If you remember, Brock the Investigator is Red Hot Games' latest Switch release. They're once again on a roll. And this is the latest Switch game involving crocodiles and alligators. They're almost as hot as rats these days. This is your classic puzzle adventure game starring animals. We've never seen that before. The twist with this one is, there's also a cheap looking beat em up in here as well, so it's covering all necessary bases for maximum funnage. Now you may think I'm being facetious, but you know me, that's too easy. Because genuinely, this game is supposed to be really good. I mean, I hate the character designs because it's all a bit too, you know, Winnie the Pooh-ish. But aside from that, it has overwhelmingly positive reviews. Interestingly, the deluxe edition has Braille on the box art. Now, the cynical side of me, which is about 80% of me, is saying that this is for tax reasons and easy publicity. But shut your mouth, you politically incorrect git, because no, this is actually a game that has full accessibility for blind people. Like full commentary, audio descriptions, it's got the lot, the whole shebang for the blind. So, I guess it's kind of like an homage to them going above and beyond and pocketing those sweet tax deductions. <clears throat> Speaking of which, you know, if tech companies really genuinely cared about blind people, like properly, properly cared, they would make a TV where the pixels, you know, could pop up and make braille out of the text on screen. Come on, Samsung. Come on, Red Out Games. I'm sure you could whip one of those up over a weekend. Just imagine the amount of old school turn-based RPG badassery that would open up to blind people. Oh well, maybe if I'm a billionaire, I might do that even before I buy Skies of Arcadia from Sega. We'll see. Anyways, enough of my cynical, philanthropic thoughts. The game itself does have incredible accessibility options, so literally anyone can play, even my drunken dad. So if you want to order this, check the links below. You can buy it from Red Out Games' website and support us at the same time. The Deluxe Edition, that is exclusive to their website. And you can also get 10% off with the code SWATCH10. Gothic Classic. Apparently I missed this one last week because for some reason it's exclusive to THQ's web store. Who knew they had one? What's the point? These guys would send your grandma to retail if there was a penny profit in for them, and that's why I love THQ. I mean, I tend not to care too much about their games, not usually my style, but I always admired them for their retail efforts, so uh, maybe a bit worrying. Maybe they won't send all their stuff to retail anymore. Well, anyways, the game looks good enough. Sonic Origins Plus is getting a collector's edition exclusive to Pix and Love. And I have to say, as much as I like Pix and Love, this is just kind of pointless in my opinion because there's nothing like hugely interesting in this edition. It's out later than the original release and worst of all, it's essentially just that retail game just repackaged, which means it still comes with a download code for the Game Gear games and Amy DLC. What? It would have been a slam dunk if they had those on the cartridge, but as it is, I don't see any need for this. But I mean, I kind of get it, because there's no way Sega would let them be one-upped, especially so soon after the original release. It would have made them look bad and made those who bought the original quite unhappy. What I'm saying is, I get why it's not on the cart, but they still should have made this collector's edition anyway. It was never going to be a win-win situation. Front Mission 2 Remake is up for pre-order at Forever Limited Games. This time they've seen a bit of sense and only have a standard edition. And although they haven't stated if this will come to retail, I think it probably will, just with a different cover art and less goodies, something like that. But this one is the one that's available to order right now. The second remake, and I heard the first remake was pretty good one all things considered. I mean, Forever Entertainment are hardly bastions of quality, but I guess with Square Enix breathing down their necks, they had to make it decent. So I'm pretty sure this one will follow suit. Remember, the West never got the original game, so this will be the first way to officially play in English. And our executive producer Robotech has chosen this as his pick of the week. Alright, it's... The import section play Asia Territory. There's only really one game this week, but if you want it, then please click the link below and use our discount code SWTV23 for an amazing 5% off. Yeah, there's only one this week, but yeah, please click the link first. That is how to support us. The code, that doesn't do anything for us. That's for you guys, okay? Click the link. Yes. 
All right, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe Plus Booster Course Pass is releasing this week. This is a re-release, of course, but uh, this Japanese exclusive also includes most of the DLC on the cartridge. It includes the characters and courses included in DLC Waves 1 to 5. That is still an unbelievable amount of content. The only downside is the final DLC Wave, Wave 6, is not on the cartridge and will be a free update once that's actually released. It is a pity that it's not complete, but I'm surprised I've seen so much vitriol from certain people as though this actually offended them. Like, like, chill out. Like, it's disappointing. Yes, you can be disappointed. I'm disappointed too. But, you know, there's a worrying vocal minority like shouting for boycotts and shit because it's not fully complete. There's like one dude on Twitter who's like losing his nut over this. And I would say he's on the road to madness for trying to get content complete cartridges. But, uh... Yeah, I, I think he's already in the madness. Yeah, he's he's kind of crazy. Of course, content and patches complete on cart. That would be that'd be wonderful. But I'm not losing sleep over a game that got an update for a couple of small glitches and added Dutch language or something. I don't know. Just I think people are getting stressed too much about this. It's not ideal, but what can you do? If I just don't buy it, right? You don't need to be angry, okay? Anyways, maybe there will be a future reprint with everything on the cartridge. Who knows? We just don't know. They just wanted to get this out in time for Christmas, you know, as a Switch. This is definitely the Switch's last Christmas. There ain't going to be another Christmas for the Switch, at least not Switch number one. Also, by the way, in Japan, there is a Jinsei game for Nintendo Switch, but that don't have English. All right, the community spotlight. Just a super quick one this week because I'm technically on holiday, even though I literally took all my equipment. My wife and daughter, very understanding. They, they know you guys need content. <clears throat> <sighs> Executive producer Instacritic sent this photo, including puppies and kittens, which I actually bought my daughter. She wasn't feeling well recently, so I bought her a couple of dog and cat games since she had enough of Kirby and Pokemon for the time being. And, well, they're not great, I'll, I'll say that. Executive producer Vei, our man in Japan, sent this photo showing off Fei Farm, one of a couple of people to do so. I know it was surprisingly expensive, but apparently has the content to match up with that. Executive producer Precision Play sent this photo showing off the super obscure Scandinavian release of Flatalaika. I can't remember how to say it, but it was only released over there. Executive producer God of Resin sent this photo with a triple helping of Super Rare as per usual. Pretty good box art all round. I used to think like they used to have pretty generic box art, but they've stepped up their game. Executive producer Feig sent in this photo with the awesome Rhapsody alongside some other classics. In fact, aside from Fae Farm, these are all fairly old games in some capacity, which is great because older games are better. Executive producer Jennifer M sent in this photo with the first Rhapsody, alongside the import for Yumeo Tutsu, two Yuri VNs in one. Sure, Limited Run did eventually do this, so you can get that these days, although neither is particularly cheap. Vast Neon sent in this photo. As you can see, Blasphemous 2 is going to be very popular now that it's released in North America. Gundam Wing Zero sent in this photo of Baton Kytus, uh, the European version, which I don't think is super easy to come by. But there was a bit of a panic about the download for an update, but apparently it's the exact same one as the Japanese and Asian versions, like 900 megabytes for like Japanese voices or something. Not a huge deal. Don't get angry about it. Kayla sent in this photo showing off the niche but much loved world of Otome. Noran 9 Last Era from Axis Games, the collector's edition, looks very lovely indeed. Executive producer Cartoon Soren got in the collector's edition of Shredder's Revenge. Pretty sweet, lots of stuff and arrived just in time for pre-orders opening for a version with updated content. I didn't point that out when I talked about the anniversary edition, but it hit me not long afterwards. It's kind of a bit of a kick in the balls really. You just get the one you ordered like a year ago and they already announced like an updated version. What's that all about? Okay, let's have a roundup. Sorry, it's so short. McLaren! Ashura G! Mr. Matt Hobb! Needless Dragon! Mickey McFlynn! Starvey! Manji! Presselak Choco Loco James Louis K 
Diesel JT. All right, please send me pictures over on Twitter. So what about game? DM me, okay? Don't tag me in a post because I won't see it. And uh, yeah, we have an email address, switchwatchspotlight at gmail.com. And our Discord, the server link is below. You can submit it in the submission section, but only send me one picture per week. All right, thank you for watching. If you watched all the way through, please leave me a white flag emoji in the comments. There's got to be a white flag because I have literally given up. I've given up hope and limited run. They have won. Special thanks to executive producers, as always. Dane Wilkinson, God of Resin, Boombox, Brent McLean, Santa Tartaruga, Alexander Kiato, Jcross7776, Punky Dooster, Cartoon Soren, Robotech, Z, Raven Knight, Fawn Metal Luna, Parsnip Coffee, Issa, They, Mental Traveler, Our Phone, Jennifer M, Instacritic, Precision Play, Kadacha, Osgolo, Totally Grateful, Alex M, and Fee. Please go check out some of our other stuff. We had a sponsored video from Square Enix a couple of days back. Uh, yeah, they paid some money so I could talk about Infinity Strash. That's handy because I was going to talk about it anyway. So uh, thanks for that. Yeah. Please go watch it though, okay? Because if nobody watches it, they'll never speak to us ever again. So go watch it and then click that link that I talk about in that video. That was really super support. You know, Switch Watch. Yeah. All oh, right. Yeah. I'm on a holiday. So yeah. See you later. Bye.